Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. A project to preserve and protect St. Lucia's heritage assets has begun. The government of St. Lucia is continuing to stride towards mainstreaming gender equality. The Department of Health and Wellness to develop effective responses against non-communicable diseases. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquail. A commitment by the government of St. Lucia to preserve and protect St. Lucia's heritage assets is being met through a project supported by the government of Mexico. A technical mission from Mexico is on island to provide assistance. With the help of the government of Mexico through the Mexican Agency for International Cooperation for Development and the Mexican National Institute of Anthropology and History, the government of St. Lucia is seeking to preserve and protect its historical assets. The project proposal was prepared with the help of the St. Lucia National Trust, with the backing of organizations like the St. Lucia Archaeological and Historical Society, the Sufria Marine Management Authority and the Ministry of Tourism. A delegation from Mexico will be on island this week to share with St. Lucia their best practices in conservation and protection of such sites. Elected member of the St. Lucia National Trust, Calix George Jr., says preservation of cultural and heritage sites is of paramount importance to any country. We need to have a, a great appreciation of who we are. Uh, I think uh, St. Lucians, sometimes, you know, students out there, they're going into their school books, they do history maybe for uh, CXC or for secondary school, and they don't quite often make that connection that the history that they read in the book actually happened in their own country. Um, so when you're reading about the Amerindians, when you're reading about um, slavery, when you're reading about, um, you know, military warfare in the Caribbean, it sometimes is not very well connected to the, the place. So that's the importance of these sites and attractions, uh, that they in fact make it more real, more tangible for individuals, uh, of course, who um, visit them for the local population. But as well, when we think about tourism around the world, uh, it is largely driven by um, natural and cultural heritage assets. Initial sites of interest include the Pigeon Island National Landmark, Viji, the Morn, Dauphin Valley, and the Piton Management Site. In Dauphin, it's really interesting because it's uh, one of St. Lucia's earliest um, known settlements. It's where there was the first uh, established stone church in St. Lucia. Uh, but over time, what happened was that uh, that settlement got destroyed due to hurricanes and other um, the French Revolutionary Wars. So it's a sort of like a time capsule uh, because you have those as well as, of course, the earlier Amerindian um, settlement, which also is where you find petro the petroglyph, which is in fact the logo of the St. Lucia National Trust. A component of the visit will be to assess these structures to determine restoration options, address the tourism product development, the possibility for archaeological investigations, and site and product management options. The technical mission will also seek to develop the local capacity to repair, renovate, and rebuild these sites. St. Lucian-born filmmaker Matrin Emanuel is taking the Caribbean by storm with her latest film, Shanté's World. Emanuel says producing the film thus far has cost some $667,000 and there is much to be done. In that vein, the filmmaker will be hosting a fundraising event in order to raise funds for the completion of the project. You know when it comes to post-production, mm -hmm. that's where marketing, mm -hmm. it's a very expensive mm -hmm. yeah, yes. um, phase to go through. So we are still begging the government and we would want to solicit the help of St. Lucians. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is to host a concert for Christmas Day mm -hmm. where the family can come together in Deriso. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we are hosting a comedy and gospel concert which um, commences from 4 to 9, 4 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. After you have had lunch with your family, you mm -hmm. just join us. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people are stressed, you know. Right. We are stressed and mm -hmm. you are stressed. So, yes. like so everyone to yes. come in and yes. just laugh, you know. You know, spend some time with the family having fun. On Christmas Day at the right. Deriso Multiple Center at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, sorry. Shante's World is a documentary feature about a teenage girl, Shante, who lived in St. Lucia during the 1960s. In this exciting narrative, Shante secretly rebels against the myths and mores of an ancient society. 
she slowly reveals all the joy, simplicity and curiosity of growing up in a place where it takes a village to raise a child. Emmanuel indicates that the government of St. Lucia has lent great support to her. I must thank um, Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose because she remained with us throughout the journey. She was always there, always encouraging and always attentive to our needs. Mm -hmm. And um, the government helped as much as possible. And we have still requested some more help because what um, we want this film to be, it's not just St. Lucia, we are embracing the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And it is not just entertainment, it is right. um, our so, culture, our, our history. history. Mm -hmm. And we went all out to ensure that we, we, we help preserve and conserve that aspect of our Caribbean life and mm -hmm. culture. Emmanuel has produced four feature films which have been screened in several countries and have amassed many awards. Despite the films being used for educational purposes, most of the funding has been provided by relatives, friends, fans, and a few organizations such as the Caribbean Export Development Agency, Virgin Atlantic, and the government of St. Lucia. All St. Lucians are urged to come out in full support as the funds raised will go towards the filming and editing of this film. The government of St. Lucia is continuing to stride towards mainstreaming gender equality in the public service. Here's Anissi Antoine. The Gender Mainstreaming Gender Budgeting Workshop forms part of the second phase of the Mainstreaming Gender Equality in St. Lucia's National Sustainable Development Plan, launched earlier this year, which seeks to ensure that gender equality is in the forefront of planning throughout the public service. Anna Androsek, facilitator of the workshop, noted that the objective of the initiative is to provide training and guidance for trainers in the St. Lucian government. The participants uh, were extremely active and engaged. This was a voluntary workshop. People had to sign for the workshop as they wanted to become trainers of trainers. It came, up of our, came out of our first exercise in gender budgeting and planning. So this time around, our participants are dedicated staff from various ministries, um, interested in learning more and incorporating this expertise within their respective departments and units at the larger macro level in St. Lucia and being willing to share interregionally and globally. Earlier this year, public servants were introduced to gender concepts and gender analysis. In order to effectively mainstream genders throughout the public service, gender budgeting is a critical aspect. So gender responsive budgeting refers to how do you make, how do you finance those initiatives that are, that are gender responsible. So in other words, uh, how do you ensure that the budget that you're given for a particular um, project or a particular department or a particular program benefits everyone? That's, that's literally what it is. And so this particular um, process that we're going through, that second phase of the, of the training, will ensure that that, that, that understanding uh, remains here. Ms. Joseph noted that the Department of Gender Relations will continue to ensure gender equality continues throughout the public and private sectors. For instance, you want to ensure that your naps are gender responsive. You want to ensure that the NAMA is gender responsive. You want to ensure that the nationally determined contributions, uh, you know, reflect gender responsiveness. So we want that to be something, a perspective or a way of, of planning that becomes commonplace in St. Lucia at all, at all levels. And the whole idea is not so that we make one particular group of persons more uh, helped than others, but that we ensure that the pie is equally shared. In January 2020, the Department of Gender Relations will host the second leg of the general gender concepts and gender-based assessments to include a larger group of public servants. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, the Department of Gender Relations has unveiled the theme for the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence observed each year starting on the International Day Against Violence Against Women on November 25 and ends on Human Rights Day December 10. The theme for this year's observance is Orange the World, Generation Equality Stands Against Rape. This theme was chosen in light of the increasing awareness of the prevalence of sexual violence 
made more visible through the Me Too and other related movements. Jenny Joseph is the acting director of Gender Relations. The World Health Organization observes that violence against women is preventable and policymakers can play a critical role in that regard. St. Lucia has since the adoption of the Beijing Platform for Action in 1995 undertaken a number of concrete steps to address violence against women, including the passage of the Domestic Violence Summary Proceedings Act of 1995, the establishment of the Family Court, the establishment of a shelter for victims of intimate partner violence, the setting up of a specialized law enforcement unit to deal with matters of violence against women, the development of a protocol for attending to victims of sexual violence by public health institutions, and in 2016, the development of a national plan, Partnership for Action, to eliminate violence against women. Notwithstanding these strides, the incidence of gender-based violence and the reports of sexual offenses have not decreased and the number of victims who reach out for available services are far less than those who are actually affected. In St. Lucia, the Department of Gender Relations, in collaboration with other stakeholders, is using this opportunity to update the public on the strides made during this year, focusing on improving survivor-centered services for victims. In March 2019, a national consultation on gender-based violence was conducted at the Bay Gardens Hotel over a two-day period. That consultation focused on a review of the achievements, setbacks, and challenges that St. Lucia had made in implementing the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. A Beijing Plus 25 report was thereafter prepared and presented to the Economic Commission of Latin America and the Caribbean. The regional picture will be reviewed at the national at the regional consultation on the status of women to be held in Chile in January of next year. Through a consultative process with stakeholders, five priority actions to accelerate gender equality in the context of the Beijing Platform for Action were selected. And they include equality and non-discrimination under the law and access to justice. Two, access to affordable quality health care, including sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights. Three, poverty eradication, agricultural productivity. Four, quality education and training and the lifelong learning for women and girls. And five, changing negative social norms and gender stereotypes. Coordinated by the UNITE campaign, the observance was conceptualized in light of the increasing challenge to end gender-based violence with gender-based violence against women being considered worldwide as the biggest challenge to achieving gender equality. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers, and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for a green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc St. Lucia Bureau of Standards Making quality and standards our way of life Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien with another update from youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. Following a successful coaching workshop for coaches attached to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, a second batch of coaches affiliated to national associations and federations affiliated to the Ministry and the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated respectively, started a four-day session with Caribbean Coaching Certification Program instructor Dave Farmer 
at the St. Lucia Olympic Committee Incorporated headquarters. The second workshop ended Sunday afternoon, having commenced on Thursday evening, with participants completing several modules in their workbooks and practical sessions. A presentation ceremony of certificates will be held at a later date. Article 6 of the agreement between the Argentine Republic and St. Lucia on bilateral cooperation in the field of sports deals with technical assistance with each party agreeing to contribute to technical and physical development in the field of sports in a country of the other party. It covers areas such as program organization, sports facilities and equipment, training and refresher courses for trainers and specialists, sports management, anti-doping policies in sport, sports medicine, scholarship programs in sports law, sports marketing and organization of sporting events, experiences in the field of gender perspective in sports and other fields agreed upon by the parties. And that's how we end our update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Health and Wellness is well on its way to generate effective responses for the prevention and control of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, as it prepares for the commencement of the STEPS survey in St. Lucia. More on this report from Fennel Neptune. The Department of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, recently hosted a training workshop on the application of the STEPS survey. The workshop is aimed at preparing enumerators and nursing supervisors who will be undertaking the STEP survey in St. Lucia. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks James says the STEP survey is extremely important as it will assist with the monitoring of non communicable diseases and its risk factors in St. Lucia. The objective of the workshop today is really to train the enumerators so that when we go out into the field, we ensure that we're collecting good quality data that we can use to um, estimate and get an idea of what the risk factors are for non-communicable diseases in St. Lucia. But the survey itself is very important because it will assist us in, like I said, estimating our non-communicable disease burden in, in the country. It will assist us in getting persons into care, more persons into care, because we know that if persons are picked up early, identified early and treated early, complications, um, heart disease, um, lung disease, kidney failure, etc. would be prevented. PAHO advisor for chronic diseases, Dr. Patrice Lawrence says, the STEP survey is important to St. Lucia as it will aid with the development of a plan to deal with the burden of non-communicable diseases. The results of the study will lead us to look at factors for which we need to focus on during our program implementation for the people of St. Lucia, allowing us to make smart decisions and to maximize our already limited resources. The study will be a sample representation of the entire population of St. Lucia. So the study is about the people of St. Lucia. The STEP survey is a household-based study, which will entail a questionnaire, cholesterol testing, urine testing, blood sugar and blood pressure testing. The survey will commence in November and will run for 10 weeks. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. Si ou ni maladi HIV et de maladi sexua, si ou pa protege ko lou ka ni sex ek plizye moun, sa ka y mette la vi ou ak gwo danje. Ou ka expose tout pat na ou poezan et an tan ki ka vini ek maladi ya. Seve yon kondom chak fwa ou ka ni sex. Chanje ki, y e potan pou dekouve maladi ya bonè, ou sa viv ak bon soti menm si ou ni maladi HIV. Pwen wè skon sa pite, proteje ko ou e bini zot, examine ko ou. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Universal Responsibility for Information and Government Services, GIS, and the Television National PIA NTN, Capositor Nouvelle en Creole, Presidente Primus Hutchinson. 
C'est le à présent à Sochimé pour décriminaliser marijuana. Du voyant cérémonie en studio GIS NTN vendredi passé, divers représentatifs groupes qui ont été en le développement d'opérations marijuana qui ont business de présent pour établissement officiellement de un site qui a gagné toute responsabilité pour guider la direction de l'initiative SALA. En tête initiative SALA, c'est le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour le business international et l'investissement en gouvernement de ceci, on est Bradley Felix. Selon le ministre Felix, pendant plusieurs pays ont embrassé le développement SALA et car ouais, c'est plusieurs bénéfices que le business SALA a c'est le site qui est en 8 ans. Alors, comme il a établi le concept SALA, il a à présent visité ces diverses communes cette ci pour présenter des plans de vaillot pour tendre ces diverses opinions qui, de la façon, le peuple a cru ça peut marcher. Puis, nous um, avons tout partout où on est dans la région, nous avons aller devant, mais nous avons la manière derrière. So, nous ne pouvons faire assurer, nous ne um, pas derrière um, plus. So, C'est pour ça que nous ne pouvons faire un mouvement pour bailler ça à fait. Comment ça passe le bon matin? Comment est-ce que vous êtes présent? Comment est-ce que vous acceptez l'affaire? Mais quelle information nous uh, mettez dehors? Car bon, et c'est différentes plateformes, c'est mon nom qui est pour parler opinion yo, car 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 bon. Puis nous voulons une manière pour tout le monde dire, manière yo qui a senti à bord, bah ça qui a sorti. Puis en chaque mon cas juste parler parler différents côtés, mais personne pas ni en en, en place pour yo um, voir opinion yo. So ça nous fait bon bon matin. Hein. So pour dire mon, nous commencer. Quand nous parlons, écoutez pour dire ça on est pour dire. So, ce n'est pas pour dire um, nous allons juste mettre des là si nous ne sommes pas involved pour parler en um, parole. Commencez lundi, le 25 novembre, quand c'est des affaires marijuana, ça là, qui est passé commune à commune à cette liste pour avoir des informations et que si vous avez des opinions, peuple. Quand c'est là, en bas, direction avocat Michael Gordon. Même la Chambre de commerce mettez la main ensemble et puis le gouvernement s'est laissé et aussi les restants nations pour montrer la peine à la cause des faits qui détruit grand maison Getty qui est propriétaire de la famille Adjouda. J'ai dit semaine passée, les pompiers trouvaient la lame là qui grand maison Getty était pris des faits. Ça a l'occasionné le service pompier sorti Gozile et Denry pour te répondre vite assistance pour les collègues yo à Castui. De fait, il a forcé plusieurs business avec l'école pour fermer parce que la fumée a été forte bon Malheureusement, malgré les pompiers, et c'est en toute façon qui était possible, de fait, il a tenu de décambrer les maisons entièrement. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour commerce, industrie et investissement, on est à Bradley Félix, déclare que ça c'est un coup de pour te voir manière établissement historique, ça a trouvé deux trucs à défaire. Le ministre Félix dit que la mémoire est que ça a l'eau, c'est le sien, qui a changé l'histoire que la maison Getty a apportée. Il parle aussi de la peine, c'est plusieurs business qui étaient en établissement, qui ont aussi brûlé, qui ont quitté à l'eau, qui ont travaillé devant nous. On voit Félix dit que le gouvernement a toujours très concerné des affaires, problèmes de travail à pays, et qui a créé un gamme qui a fait tout de suite ont diverses agences pour aider à corriger la situation. En résultat, il y a plusieurs départements de gouvernement qui ont été en là et que ces business privés tenu pour fermer l'opération. Quand même, toute opération, ces business là avec le département de gouvernement, supposé virer quand tu es en opération, le 25 novembre. Fondation pour le développement affaires culturelles, c'est ici, CDF qui a fait gamme pour une grande fête décembre l'année 2019 à Batem la Noël Creole. Directeur exécutif pour CDF, Ramona Henry, explique que la fête de Noël a été une période qui a apporté une efficacation à parmi les peuples et les communes au niveau du pays. Pour essayer de faire une initiative à la succès, CDF a collaboré et puis plusieurs agences à parmi les civils construit Castri et Piton Company. Dans les salaires, c'est le bureau de la mère Castri qui a eu un prix pour la compétition latin 
pour l'école Sakade et qui a porté le Peterson Francis Award. Ça a été la compétition de choix le peuple. J'ai vu des affaires de communication en consulte là. Jason Hollinson dit qu'il y a plus de confiance qui puisse la encourager plus de participation à la compétition de l'auteur. L'année ça, plusieurs écoles Sakade qui a participé à la compétition et le ministre qui a une responsabilité pour la culture. Je suis venu à la fin de la semaine de spectacle de la semaine. Feste deuxième, feste de la semaine, j'ai été trouvé présenté officiellement. J'ai passé le 21 novembre, exposé commencé et puis feste Carole le 1er décembre. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé la nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation pour jeter plus encore. C'est-à-dire, quand vous avez la vie, Lenga ipo seto alot novela koyol. Apo isa, mka vye po seto u nisha. Messi on pill primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over the Windward Islands and areas further south. Over the Leeward Islands, fair to partly cloudy with a few scattered showers. Moisture and instability associated with a tropical wave will continue to cause cloudiness, showers and isolated thunderstorms over most of the Lesser Antilles today and tomorrow. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 2.24 p.m., low at 9.03 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay, High at 3.31 p.m., low at 10.30 p.m. Seas, moderate to locally rough with waves 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.09 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.